Hello, uh, today's class will be looking at normal distribution. In this aspect of normal distribution, we are going to study how to use the normal distribution curve, how to find your z value, uh, to find the variance, and using normal distribution to also solve for probability. So the normal distribution is an appropriate model for many common continuous distribution. For example, you have the matrix of newborn babies, the IQs of school students, the hand span of adult females, and the height of large wings in the field. So on this, uh, you can represent this um, distributions using the normal distribution for the this the normal curve. And on the normal distribution, we'll be using the percentage point on the normal distribution. This is table we'll be using for your normal distribution, we call it the percentage point of the normal distribution. And also we'll be using our normal distribution table, the positive values here. We have the positive normal distribution table. We also have the negative normal distribution table. So in the second, uh, for, I think in your exam, you'll be provided with this table. So you have to make reference to this table here. So, oh, for example, you have uh, your histogram. The normal distribution also works with the histogram to get a curve. This is my histogram. I'm going to draw the histogram here. So, this is my histogram. Okay. So, on this is our frequency density, and this is the classroom for your histogram. So on this, when you have a histogram, draw this way for you. Okay, I'm just giving an instance of your histogram here. We have this. Okay, so connecting this, uh, the histogram point here, you are connecting this on the normal distribution form. Okay, so this is a rough sketch of what the normal distribution form looks like. So uh, for this, I'll be using this to make my normal distribution form. This gives a curve like this. Okay, so this is your normal distribution curve. And at this point here, can be denoted as your mode, median, or mean of the distribution. So any of this uh, can be used to represent this midpoint. We call it the axis of symmetry. So uh, on this is your mode or mean, which I represent with this. Then yeah, on this angle here becomes the variance. Okay, so you have this value for the variance. And here it gives me the mean plus the variance. So that means if you are moving backward, this area under here is going to give me mean minus the variance. And this to give me mean minus twice of my variance. So it's a continuous work you have to do. Then we have to, we are going to look for the percentage value under your, by uh, your normal distribution curve. So on the normal distribution curve, we have certain areas allocated or certain percentage allocated to the distribution curve. So I have my curve this way. So this is the curve with the mean. So we have our mean here. And we are looking at this angle here. So if you have for the set of data from this point, 
The angle covered by this from this in this region is 68 percentage of the distribution. So we have the probability of this sample space there at 68 percentage. So if this region is 68, I'll just do 68 divided by two, it gives me 34, 34 percentage of the distribution. So we have 34 percentage, 34 percentage, which is 0 0.34 and 0 0.34. So this is the area under it here. Then I have this and this. So the area underneath this point to this point here, they have this. This gives us 95 percentage of the distribution. So uh, 95 percentage, I'll do 95 minus the 68, because we already have 68 out of the 95 minus 68 is 7, 27 percent. So the 27 I divide by 2 to give 13 points 5 percentage. So for the area under this, I have 13.5 percent and I have 13.5 percentage. Okay, this is 0 0.135 and this is 0 0.135. Okay, so we are left with this, this area here, and this region here. So, the area under this place to this place gives 99.7 percentage. So, we are going to look for the percentage for this two point. So, that means I have 99.7 minus 95, which gives 4 point seven. So the four point seven will divide by two. Same thing we did for the previous one. This is two point three five. So on this I have two point three five percentage and here it is two point three five percentage. So this is the area underneath this. Then you know that the total area under here is one, which is hundred percent. So I would have 100 minus 99.7. So 100 minus 99.7. So what value you have divided by 2, it gives 0 0.15 and 0 0.15 percentage. So if you are given any question to find the percentage, any certain percentage under the distribution for you come here and you say to me. So from here is our mean. So this is the mean, which is the mean value at this point. We have the mean value at this point. Here. So the area of the this is our mean, which is 50% of the data. And this is for 68% of the population. And this is for 95% of the population. And this area is for 97%, 99.7% of the population. So we are going to look at examples on how to use the binomial form to solve some questions. So we have uh, this question, the weight of the group of mice are modeled as this. Okay, so uh, what first thing you have to take note on your bilinear distribution. This, when you have this, okay, so we have this as our mean, this is your mean, and this is the variance. So take note of these two factors in your normal distribution. You have it as a mean and as the variance. So uh, so this here is the mean and this is the variance. Okay? So if your variance is 25 here, that means that whatever they're telling you here, your variance squared is equal to 25. That means the variance here is equal to 5. So we can have it as 5 squared which is simply written for you there as 25. 
So uh, we are going to look at this question and see the weight of a group of mice are measured as this. If 97.5% of the mice weigh less than 70 grams, find U, which is, we are asked to find this, which is the mean of the distribution. So I uh, will simply like us to draw our binomial, our normal distribution from very, I'm used to this binomial, so, <laughs> so we'll draw the normal distribution for So drawing this is so I have my four and this is my mean. I have this. I have this. This. And this okay, so we know that this point here is the mean, which is 50 percentage, or we have this as 34 34, this is 68. Okay, so that this is the mean, and this point is 50. Okay, so at this point here, I'm adding 50 to 34, which gives what 84. If you go back to our curve degree here, make a reference to this, so the other is 13.5. They have this area here as 13.5. Then we have here as 2.35. We have here as 0 0.15. So adding this, I have to add 50 plus 34 gives 84. Next is 84 plus 13.5. This gives 97.5. So you add 97.5 plus 2.35. So 97.5 plus 2.35 will give us 99.85. Added to this, this does complete 100 percentage. So same thing, you subtract 50 minus 34 is this, okay? So uh, it's a further reduction on this part. So it keeps it moving towards the end. So this is um, our distribution. So we are given that the question says the weight of a group of mice are modeled as this. If 97.5% weigh less than 70 grams. So this is the region for 97.5%. So they're telling us the area under this weigh less than what? 70 grams. So I'll write my 70 grams here. That is the weight under this place. The weight less than 70 grams. So what is the what is the mean? They're looking for the mean, which we don't know. They're looking for the mass of the mean back for the class for the distribution. So I have 70 grams here. Uh, we say like I said earlier, this is your mean, then here becomes loss. My variance. Okay, so this loss variance will give us what? Will give us the value for this and this loss. This or that is we have to keep subtracting. So if the weight is 70 grams and I have my variance for the class, take note the variance for the class was 25, which I said can be given written as pi square. So uh, 70 grams of which will give me 70 for this, I'm going to back to this value. That's 70 minus 5, it gives 65. So this value is 65. And that also gives you 65 minus 5 gives 60. So our mean value for this distribution is equal to what? 60. Okay, so this is how you use your normal distribution form to find certain values. So we've got our mean at 60. You can also use it to find your variance, which we are going to look at in other examples. Yeah. So we have this example, the random variable x is given that probability of x is greater than 20 is 0 0.20. 
we have to find the value of the, which is our mean. So we are looking for the value of the mean. So take note we have this formula for probability of O and G is equal to X minus the mean divided by the variance. Okay, so take note of this formula. We are going to be applying this formula where you are looking for the mean or the variance or also the probability of the distribution. So we are given that the probability of X is greater than 20 is 0 0.20. We are asked to find the value of the mean. So uh, we say probability of Z is 0 0.20. I'm not going to use this value. I'm going to look uh, at my percentage point. I just, I took it up table now. I'm going to refer to the value of this using my percentage point table. I'll bring it down for you to take a look at. So this is the percentage point table. On the percentage point table, I'm going to set the value of 0 0.2. So this is 0 0.2 on the percentage point table, giving me 0 0.8416. So the value of this is 0 0.8416. Okay, so that is our Z value. Because you're saying the probability of X greater than this is this. So Z is giving me 0 0.8416. So I will have, I will substitute it into this equation here. I'm taking that equation, which is probability of Z is equal to x minus u divided by our variance. So uh, we have the x for the class, which is 20 minus, we don't know what the mean is, we are looking for the mean, divided by the variance, which we have as 3. So uh, we have 0 0.8416 is equal to 20 minus my mean divided by 3. So cross multiply, you have 0 0.8416, 8416 times 3 equals to 20 minus this. Okay, so I have 0 0.8416 multiplied by 3 is 2.525. So 2.525 equals 20 minus this. So connect like terms. So u is 20 minus 2.525. So 20 minus 2.525 equals 17.475. So my mean is 17.475. And I hope you understand this. So you just have to substitute the value into it using your key point table, and we are good to go. So let's see more examples on the normal distribution. So looking at this example, we say machine made metal chip with this XCM modeled as a normal distribution such that this is equal to this. Given that this probability of x less than 46 is 0 0.2119, find the value of your variance. Okay, so we are looking for the value of the variance. Using our formula, z is equal to x minus your mean divided by the variance. So we have the probability of this for the is equal to 0 0.2119. I'm having 0 0.2119 is equal to, so we have x for the value 46 is my x. I have the mean, if you come back here, this is the mean value, which is 50, divided by the variance. Okay, so you just have to substitute the value into it. That gives 0 0.2119 is equal to. 0 0.2119. So this gives 0 0.2119 equals to minus 4 over the variance. So if you take a look at this, on your percentage point, you know this is less than the actual probability. So what I will do, 
because uh, on a normal distribution curve, I'll just have one minus this 0 0.2119 nice, this gives 0 0.8. Okay, so we have 0 0.8 there. I'll substitute that value. 0 0.8 is equal to minus 4 divided by 0. So our variance is minus 4 divided by 0 0.8. So we have minus four divided by 0 0.8, which is minus five. So we have this to be a minus 0 0.8, so this gives you as five. So we've got the uh, variance for the distribution. The second part of the question says we should find the 90th percentile of the V. So this I'm going to draw the distribution of to find the ninth percentile of this one. So uh, we have uh, now we can represent our uh, data with our mean is what our mean is 15. Then we have the variance as 5 twins. Okay, so that is here I have 50 and we're looking for 90th percentile this is 34. This is 34, so this is 84. Okay, so we have our 90th percentile. Going towards this angle here. Okay, so we are looking for the 90th percentile of, of the distribution. So uh, we have 50, like uh, we have the probability of V is equal to 1. X minus the mean over the variance. Okay, so we are representing this with the variance, and we have 90th percentile. 90th percentile will be 0 0.9. So using this table, I've got this table here. So, Chinese, you can um, please uh, you can look this table if you don't have the hard copy. So, this table you fix on your mind 0 0.9. I don't think you can see if it fits 0 0.9 it's between this region here. My 0 0.9 gives 1.21 on this part. So I have 1.21 here on this table here. So you can check for it, get a soft copy. So it's within that region. So that gives me 1.216. So we have that. That is how I'm. Uh, Table of value for this. So 0 0.9 is 1.21. Okay. Going to it is 1.286. I have to check very well because this uh, table here is quite uh, small to get the better uh, table so you can get your values correctly. So this gives me 1.286, so that means the z value here is 1.286, which we are looking for the x of the 90th percentile. We already know our mean is 50 and our variance is 5. So what you just do first and do 1.286 multiplied by 5 is equal to x minus 15. So I have 1.286 multiplied by 5. Is 6.430 plus 6.430 plus 50 gives me the x. So that gives us 56.43. Okay, so we have that value as our 90th percentile. So if you take a look using this uh, curve here, if our mean here is 50. Like I said, you keep adding your variance to it, and that's why I do this for reference. So if you keep adding variance to it, uh, the variance you had was 5. So if I add my variance here, it gives me 65. And I say this graph here is the region we are looking for. So it falls within this value here. That is why I'm having 56.43. So I will resume uh, with another example. So let's take a look at this example. It says the random variable, this is given that probability of x 
greater than 0.5 is 0.025, and probability of x less than 15 is this. So we are asked to find the value of our mean and the value of the variance. Okay, so we are looking for the two values. So remember our formula is say z is equal to x minus our mean divided by the variance. Okay, so uh, if you look at this, we have probability of x, which is 35. So our x value is 35. And the probability of z for the first is 0 0.025. I've brought my table down here. 0 0.025. I'm going to trace it on my percentage point table if I use a positive uh, normal table. 0 0.025 gives 1.96. So I'll substitute that value here. 0 0.025 equals 1.96 is equal to x minus our x. We already have x, so let me replace x. There's no need to write x. x is 35 minus the mean over the variance. Okay, so you can cross multiply 1.96 multiplied by the variance is equal to 35 minus u. I have one equation here. You can make this equation one. So we also have the probability of x less than 15 is equal to 0 0.1469. So we have that as 0 0.1469, which you know on your distribution table it is below. So we are going back on your normal distribution table. So that will give you a negative value. So please use your uh, you can use your Distribution table to find this value of 0 0.1469. So checking this value should give you minus 1.05. So I have that value as minus 1.05 is equal to x minus u again. We are going to our x at that point is 15 minus we don't know what the mean is divided by the variance. So cross multiply here gives. Minus 1.05 is equal to uh, times the variance equals to 15 minus the mean. So we have equation 2. So bring these two equations together 1.96 equals to 35 minus u. 1, then I have minus 1.05 equals to 15 minus u, which is my equation 2. So I will subtract this uh, equation. Subtracting this gives me minus this minus u. I'll have 3.01 times the variance, which equals to 35 minus 20 and minus u minus u is equal to zero. Okay, so uh, looking for my variance is going to be the 20 divided by 3.01. Zero, 01. So the variance at that point is 8.6445. Okay, so I'm going to talk to a significant figure. I can have it at 8.64 or you can use this value. So we are going to substitute this value into any of the given equation that you have. So I will substitute 1.96 times. 6.64 is equal to 35 minus my mean. So uh, multiply this and subtract to give you 1.96 times 6.64. 1.96 times 6.64 is 13.014. Okay, is equal to 35. Minus the mean. So uh, looking for your mean, mean becomes 35 minus 13.0134. So that gives us the value of 21.986, approximately 22. So the value of my mean is 22. So I have the mean at 22. And the variance of this distribution at 6.64. It's easy for a more example 
has to have. But we always make reference to the for, uh, percentage point table or you use your positive distribution table. We have the positive and also the negative distribution table. And also take note for when the value is increasing and when the value is decreasing along the curve. Okay, at this value backward here, this area here, you can say it is a decreasing value. At this point, it is decreasing. That's why we have a negative value on this point. Then on this point here, if you have anything record here, the value of your Z increases along this value. So that's why if I have anything below my uh, mean, which is 0 0.5 here, this is the average of the distribution to 0 0.5. Any value below this is decreasing. So you have to subtract it to have a negative value. Then any value within this range increases, which should be a positive value. Then you are using your uh, the distribution table to find the value of Z. Please always take note you have to find the value of Z first before you proceed with any one. 